Hi, welcome back to Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design and it's Eva here today and um, I hope you're all well and uh, looking forward to today's tutorial. It is by request again. Uh, this time it was one of our viewers who asked us to do a signet ring, a men's signet ring with an emerald cut stone and <clears throat> halo of diamonds with a uh, with filigree on the side. Um, well, I, so as not to, to, to bore you with a super long tutorial, um, I'm going to do this in stages. So today is going to be the signet ring with the emerald cut stone and the halo of stones. And in our next tutorial, um, or in a tutorial down the line, we'll look at doing some filigree on the side of the ring. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to use my grasshopper gold up here to fetch an emerald cut stone. And the stone I am going to make about one centimeter long. And um, we're going to make that 7.2 wide. Depth looks good. And uh, we can go with the settings that we've got here. If you've got an emerald stone or emerald cut stone with a particular size already, you can just input those dimensions. I'm going to give the stone a bit of a concave corners and create. And close this. So here we've got our emerald cut. Um, I'm just going to change that to full opaque and we're just going to change our viewports to shaded. Okay, so I'm going to input my ring size next. So I'm just going to change the name of this layer to RS and I'm going to use the circle curved command tool use the zero point as our center and I want a circumference of 52 in my front viewport there we go that would be my ring size and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the stone up so that I have more or less a feeling of what the dimensions on this is going to be if you bring the stone down a slight bit it's just a millimeter or so away from the ring size and then the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to create a second ring uh, curve a, a, a rail curve from my front viewport and I'm going to do that by creating an offset curve of my ring size so what we can do here is Put in a new layer called curves and just change the color to something else and see it well and then offset the ring size curve by I'm gonna make it 1.8 actually that's even too big so we can make it 1.5 that's good um, that's going to stay 1.5 at the bottom of our ring that's a good size because our ring is going to be fairly broad from the side view so we don't need it to be too thick at the bottom and I am going to lift the top curves up to create the outside curve the outside of our ring um, I'm going to rebuild those curves as well actually first what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a cut plane through the middle and I'm going to trim this cut plane uh, this curve in half get rid of the one half and I'm going to rebuild this curve with seven points it's going to allow me more freedom to shape the ring to something that I want it to look more like. So I'm going to bring this curve out. 
bring that down and that looks nice I uh, could even bring that out a bit more and bring it down because what we're going to do is we are going to um, if we want to put a halo of stones I'm going to have to create a frame around the stone in the middle the uh, best way to do this is to fetch a um, object intersection so or section section is even better a section curve will allow me to create or take a section of any object and turn it into a curve so here we've got just the profile of the emerald stone uh, emerald cut stone and it is a curve simply by drawing a line through it just going to join that in case it's not one object so here we go it's one curve uh, now we're going to offset this curve as well we're going to offset this curve twice uh, the first will be by <clears throat> let's say we've got a halo with stones the size 1.3 uh, to maybe 1.4 then we are going to make this a offset of approximately 1.9 maybe a bit too big we, let's work with 1.3 stones so one pointers and let's make this a offset of 1.7 okay and why am I doing the 1.7 well I'll show you why because first of all I'm going to do another offset and this time I'm going to make that offset 0.2 this is what we're going to set our stone in this is going to be a a, um, a edge then there's going to be a dip that's going to be our bright cut and with the outside curve we're going to do an offset curve into the inside with the same dimension 0 0.2 and this curve that we created the profile curve that we created on the outside we will now join up to the edge of our frame okay so next step um, at this point depending on how you want your signet ring to look um, <clears throat> what would usually what would usually work nicely is um, a angular looking ring so we can try one of a few things the first thing I would naturally gravitate towards is a rail revolve where I will take my profile curve and I would take my rail curve the rail curve will be the frame on top uh, use zero the zero line is my axis and as much as crazy as this looks for now um, this will very quickly change into something very cool uh, just by using the cage tool so I'm just going to flip that around and I'm going to grab the uh, ring size uh, curve select object we're going to extrude that the reason I'm extruding that is because it gives me a good idea of how the ring looks once it has the whole cut out so we've got the the shape of the ring here now what we're going to do is we are going to go to our transform tool grab cage edit make a bounding box and we're going to leave it simple with four points in all directions the simpler the cage edit the less deformed the object will look and I'm going to start bringing in my my ring on the sides okay and just be careful not to lose too much on top so that's looking really nice So now that 
we have a really nice form here but we could still maybe make it a tad bit narrower there we go let's have a look on the sides it's nice and thick now that we have a really nice form here let's build the halo so let's um switch that ring off for a moment uh, the ring size and i'm going to lift the center stone up because when you set a halo around a center stone it's good when the diamonds are at an angle at an angle it catches the light better so yeah that we didn't want to have happen so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a purge my history and now when I lift the main curve up history purge uh, history purge helps if I spell it right history purge all okay now if i lift my center stone up it shouldn't be lifting the short child curves because we've subsequently deleted our history so what we're going to do is we are going to create the frame for the main stone so question are we going to bezel set the stone because if we bezel set the stone we're going to make this main setting a little bit smaller so that we can cut the stone out and let's loft that so we're going to loft these two have a flat surface um, switch my main stone off and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create the blind uh, the bright cut uh, how i'm going to do this is i'm going to go into my side view i could do it from my front view or my side view let's do it from the side view i'm just going to create my polyline uh, go from mid of my curve so that's mid and 0.25 is my depth I could even go a little bit deeper 0 0.35 um, now I want my surface to be 1.3 switch off the O snap and that's about good and then I'm going to connect up with the edge of my signet ring and we are uh, going to do a sweep to rail so let's grab our actually that was oh that's fine we will let, let go of that little frame there so we're going to use this curve from the signet ring and the curve from the top of our frame as our two rails and we are going to use this as our profile curve there we go it's nice and clean flip that and just join everything up and at this point i'm also going to extrude that face down just extrude solid or we could also just use the gumball and push pull it all the way down i'm going to pull it all the way down past our ring curve and i'm going to flip that again join everything and now what we're going to do is we're just going to cap this so cap, plan holes. 
we'll close this up in the middle so when we do our bullion we will have the hole for our for our stone so we're going to set the stone down into the surface at this point maybe we can make the stone a tad smaller and we are going to make a cutter for that stone as well so let's bullion ah something to mention if this ring is meant to be hollow inside um, then what we would do is I'm going to create a second layer here and call that hollow bullion uh, space I'm going to copy this ring into that layer let's just switch that off for a moment let's defer boolean difference that out okay so if for instance you wanted to make this ring inside your hollow we could do that but you would need the original shape that i had before i decided to boolean it out to do that to do that with uh, with much ease um before we get into that let's just make the seat for our stone so i'm going to go to my grasshopper gold and fetch a gem cutter select my gem let's just switch off so what we want is we want something that's let's say 95 percent the size of our stone maybe a little bit more 98 percent and we are going to move that spire down so that when we move the whole cutter up has the shape of the stone can make it even bigger like that okay and let's switch that off now when I put my ring back on again I'm going to grab the ring and I'm going to do another boolean difference with the cutter tool so now I've got a little seat for my stone so I'll switch the stone off See, I've got you a little seat for the stone. Uh, if that seat is too small, you can make the you can make the hole here smaller. Um, and now we're going to put the stones inside the halo. So I'm going to go back to my jewelry setting. Uh, what first you're going to do is put this ring into its own layer. So I'm going to pull that ring. Let's give it a color. This is from using matrix I'm used to making my settings in green colors. And working again in the curve layer. So we're going to extract isocurves. So let's start. I'm going to go with the middle isocurve and one side as a curve now it's not necessary to do the stones all the way around if you do just one side and polo array it it will be enough so we're just going to take these two sides join them and we will put gems on a curve so selected the curve I am going to orient it to a surface this will be my surface select surface and we can adjust the start position so that it, it's on that corner exactly what we want to do same with our in position we want the in position to be on the corner we want our stones to be about 1.3 like we said uh, 0.3 and let's again orient that in position 
Well, what we're going to do is we're going to put a stone just on the end corner here and then we're going to put the rest of the stones right. can, If we take the space down between the stones we could make the stones maybe a bit smaller that would probably help. Yeah, that's good. So make stones just a little bit, bit smaller. Okay. Now the stones should be on the surface, which they are. And we're going to add prongs while we add it. And in this case, you want your prongs be not too big 0 0.5 is pretty good it's a pretty good size if you're sharing if you want each stone to have its own prongs um, then you might want to go down to say 0 0.4 and nudge it in and we want to bring that height down a little bit to be extremely high that makes them more fragile when they're printed and again find that they are a little bit far away from the stone although what the goldsmith would do is he would eventually saw through them and set them separately but let's have a look again what we've got here That might be better. Otherwise, the same. Find me. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, we edit that af afterwards. So we create. And let's go into our stone texture color and just bring up the opaqueness. So at this point, we could ungroup and delete the prongs we don't or cannot use and <clears throat> at this point I place the prongs I place prongs where I I want them to finish to finish up the layout So here we need actually we need one big prong here yeah, for these two. And here we will for this one make it a bit bigger, lift it out a bit, and use the gumball to duplicate that so you've got two. Okay. And uh, we still need another two prongs here, so change the size to 0 0.4. It's a bit small. Right click on the prongs, select circles. And just bring that height down. Okay. Put them in our prong layer. Let's delete the extra prong layer. Okay, at this point, actually, make that little prong at the top there a bit, a bit smaller. So be a bit less high. Then what we also need is we need cutting tools for these stones. Um, 
Supposing we're going to make the inside of this ring hollow, we will use cutters that have a bottom neck. Uh, so let's take the first one here, select gems, switch off the, start of the, the ring for a moment, and I'm going to increase the height or the depth of the cutter make it fairly long. I'm going to make it also a bit bigger. And I'm going to increase the, the location of the neck just a little bit. Okay, great. Okay, now we've got our cutting tools as well. And we're just going to take all of that Go into our top view and do a polar array from the center. Oh no, wait, that's not going to work. Okay, so you may have noticed this way before I did that I'm not working with a square, I'm working with a rectangle. So I'm going to have to do another corner here. So what I'm going to do. I would rotate this up over to the side and we're going to do one what one edge here and we're going to rotate that over to the other side as well so again extract a curve uh, so extract as a curve where are you there you are and so same same treatment, join those curves, go and fetch gem on curve, select curve, uh, select surface, and now we're going to up the size of our stones to we had one point just under 1.3 or around about 1.3. Let's move that start position. To the edge and same with our end position perfect okay and we will add the prongs like we did the other to 0 0.4 size prong and we had double prongs Prong was even smaller. And uh, red. These prongs are a little bit high, I'm just going to bring them down. And grip them. Delete the ones we don't need. Again, make our prongs our peg. I don't see so well, so for me it's, it's better when it's a peg. So make that prong a bit bigger, like we did on the other side. This one is going to stay in the corner here. We're just going to duplicate it over. And get rid of that one and bring this one down and bring this one over. Complete this one, it's not necessary. So um, I like it when my prongs look tidy and too big.
so same story what we're going to do is we are going to create the spires make them the same as the last ones so we're going to make them deeper a bit broader and move the neck down a bit okay there we go and now that we've got that done now we can go and rotate this around to the other side so click rotate Point zero, copy yes, and here we go. Uh, so now to do the hollowing out on the inside, um, how I generally do this, I'm just going to switch off the stones and and and. and the cutter and, and prongs for the moment and I'm going to switch on that uh, a copy I made of the ring now you'll see it's it's not um, it's not cut through uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to extract the top surface here and why uh, you'll see in a moment because I'm going to get rid of the hole I made and I'm going to re join all of this and I'm going to cap it on the top this time this is so that when I scale it down it cuts uh, it cuts away the the inside so we're just gonna press shift on our gumball and we're just gonna scale it down Not about you. We could at this point scale it down a little bit more but just in the one direction so you have a gap here between the outer and the inner and this should see to it that we have enough cut away inside it's just ghost of view and then in ghosted view I go over it again to see that I've got enough um, <clears throat> thickness inside and now we can bullion this out of the inside okay so there you you've got it bullion out now if we put the spires on the spires are cutting through nicely exactly where we want them if I wanted to move that for example this spire here is 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 in a bit of a strange position I, if I wanted to move the spire a little bit over to create a more even spacing between the spires I just have to create uh, just sub select uh, with um, shift control and I move the spire over Which is exactly what I'm going to do. And do, do that just for these corner spires. A little bit close. Mm -hmm. These two as well. 
gone way too close. And now we can bullion those holes out. So I'm going to bullion difference the spiders out. Let's switch that off. Okay, so there we go. We've got the halo. We have the center stone. And if you wanted to give it a little bit more meat on top here, before you 3D print it, you could just go ahead and uh, lift this top piece up a bit like that, and that should give you more uh, should give you more material for printing. Sorry if that cut. And here we got our stones. We have our prongs, and let's render that up. It's nice and hollow inside. We could check the weight on that so let's have a look here this is nine grams in gold uh it's eight grams eight and a half grams in silver for a uh, uh, 12.6 grams in 18 karat gold it's, um, acceptable and now for the last touch um shall we render that so I'm just going to quickly create material. Let's go with metal. And just use the presets. Uh, select the objects in the prong layer. And we have a diamond, and we're just going to select the diamonds, objects, give them the diamond material. Let's see the emerald. Don't see what's happening here, but um, if I put the ground plane on, it is on, and go into our red trace. Ah, it's green. Okay, great. Um, let's make a texture for our ground. I'm just going to take a plaster, make it black, and change our ground plane to this black material. And here we go. I can put a light in. But let's look at our lights. So lights on. Put the sun on. Environment. And sun. So I like to use the sun in manual control. And in my environment, I like to put in my own background. So uh, where it gives me background image options, I like to change the Rhino Studio to something uh, something with a bit more color. What you can also do is you can, under Object Properties, take your ring and give it a softening setting um, 0 0.000001 is probably a bit much 0 0.01 is good or 0 0.02 we'll see which works just going to put it on and yeah you can see it's giving you render anomaly so five, let's try that. And the 
sits in does not load well with my softening so we'll just switch that off so there you go there's the signet ring with an emerald cut stone and a halo of diamonds um i hope you all enjoyed today's tutorial uh that it that it was uh, um, uh, informative and uh, if you liked it please please click like and, and share or subscribe and uh, we will be seeing you soon hope you have a very cool day cheers